Alex Hormozzi, the $100 million man. Last month, I created Pocket Hormozzi, which is essentially a cloned version of Alex Hormozzi that was trained off of all of his public data in order to mentor me. I could chat with him on my phone anytime I wanted. All of this in order to get him to mentor me. Now, obviously getting business advice from someone like Alex Hormozzi is incredibly difficult, not to mention incredibly expensive with some sessions being up to $50,000. So not only is it incredibly difficult, but it's incredibly expensive as well. Not to mention watching every single one of his videos can be extremely time consuming and personally i'm a big fan of efficiency although it upsets my girl that's just how i live my life so naturally i had a lot of people asking me how i built it or how they could use it i'm not gonna lie there is some temptation to set up some sort of paywall to allow people to use it this wasn't purely just out of greed it was like a small monthly fee but also to account for usage because obviously OpenAI and bot press they charge for usage but i decided not to do that because not only would it be expensive and a lot of maintenance for me but on this channel we are all about value you, specifically free value. And I share my sauce with everyone. That's what he said. That's what she said. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in order to build your very own pocket hormozy. Without further ado, let's get into it. So you're going to need a couple different things, but first and foremost, you just need bot press. Once you're in bot press, you're going to click create chatbot. It's going to come up with this congratulations thing, and you're going to go ahead and click on edit. It's gonna be super simple. Just to show you guys what the finished product looks like is honestly really simple. It's like four or five different nodes. It's not that difficult. The most difficult part is actually gonna be the knowledge base. And I'll talk to you about that later. But as you can see here, we have our initial greeting node. We have the get character node, which is just getting in character for Alex Hormozzi. We have a loop and then we have an end. So I'm gonna walk you guys through every single one of these steps. Of course, I'm gonna be revisiting this page just to bring some things over in order to save time, but you guys will still see everything for what it is. First and foremost, the congratulations, right? here, we're going to click on start from template. We're going to start from basic. We don't need anything crazy. Let's just go ahead and say hello to our chatbot. Now, what we're going to do is skip past all this. It doesn't really matter. Going to move our start over a little bit. Going to right click standard node. And then this one is going to be our greeting. Now for this, you have two options. You can either A, you can add card and just make it a standard greeting. So like, hey, how's it going? You can make it predetermined like that. Or you can use AI. But honestly, guys, with the greeting, it's not going to really make much of a difference. Just for the sake of continuity with my actual Hormozy bot, I'll use the AI greeting, but there's not really much of a difference between a hey, how's it going, or a yo, what's up, man, especially when you're just using the bot yourself. So I'll show you guys how to do the AI task as well, just for the sake of throwing it in here. But personally, I think a predetermined response in terms of the greeting is perfectly fine. Get rid of this right here, delete that. So the AI task, you're going to see a couple different things. You're going to see the task instructions. So we're just going to say something like greet the user as if you were... Alex Hormozzi, I speak in a calm and casual tone. It's just super simple. It's gonna be the same thing for the task input. A task input is basically your prompt. It's gonna be what is sent to the actual AI engine. Now, usually you do this for an information collection. So it collects information and then you can use this little at symbol to insert those variables. But that's exactly why it doesn't really matter for the greeting and you're just kind of wasting tokens because you're gonna be using it yourself. Still, I'll show you how to do it. You can honestly just copy this over. You can say, uh, use words like yo and man see and then store result you don't really need to store this result like it's just a greeting it doesn't really matter task example you can do something like you know the input let's just say go ahead and throw this down here in terms of the temperature you can adjust that the temperature will just adjust how creative it is the model you can also adjust that it can be like input that would used to be hey or hi just something super like that right it's super basic you really don't need to over complicate it with this let's go ahead and pull mine up right here so this is what i had for mine I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over here go ahead and throw that into this just for the sake of saving time but you guys can pause the video and copy all of that if you want go ahead and move this over here too if you want to save the input you can save it to a workflow so i'll show you guys how to do that in just a second you can say you know alex greet it'll create that workflow and it'll store the result so you can just click save there doesn't really matter that much though go ahead and open up task example da -da -da. And task like example input, yo, Alex, how's it going? Something like that, Alex, greet. Now you actually, if you want it to respond in a specific way, the benefit with using the variables is that it will give you an option to basically show an example of how the AI might respond. So it'd be like, yo, man, it's going good. Obviously, I don't think Alex would talk like that, but I just like to keep it kind of casual. So super simple. 
Now, what we're gonna do in order for this text to actually show up is add another card and we're gonna bring up this text card. In order to use the AI, you do need to store the result actually. So workflow.alexgreet, and that's exactly what we're gonna use in this text. So for the text to actually show up, we need to call on this variable where it stored the results. We're gonna say at workflow.alexgreet. So now whatever the AI comes up with, say it says, yo man, it's calling on that workflow and now it's gonna say that. Finally, just to finish up this card, all we're gonna do is add an expression card. So we're gonna add an expression, I'm gonna click expression. And for this, I like to disable the AI here and just condition is true. And it's gonna move on to the next node. So we're gonna pull on this, move over to the next node and click on standard node. Now this is where we're gonna start actually getting into the bot building, but we have our greeting. So let's go ahead and connect this to the start right here. And let's go ahead and give it a little whirl. Boom. All right, cool. So we have a an AI greeting. That's great. Again, guys, I really think the AI is a little extra here. It's not really necessary, but if you want to use it, if you really want to go I am on it, it's fine. That's absolutely okay. If you're using voice flow, you can also make API calls to 11 labs and like, you know, get a whole voice thing going. So that might be where you want to use AI. But again, I really don't think it's necessary. Our next one is going to be question ask. Now we're going to need a couple different nodes for this. We're going to need an information capture node, the AI task, and then an intent node and uh, expression node. So I'm going to show you guys how to card, I should say, but I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So first and foremost, what we want to add is a user input. We want to capture information. So what we want to do is add a capture information card. You're going to insert a raw input card right here, and it's going to be user ask. That's where we're going to store the results. We're going to say, what kind of questions do you have for me? That kind of thing. So that's what it's going to ask the user. And we're going to store that in user ask. Boom. Okay, cool. So now when a user asks a question, it's going to store their question. From here, we're going to add an AI task. That is going to be our next step. Now, let me go ahead and grab this from what I had. So we're going to say, again, guys, you can just copy this. It doesn't, you don't need to like type it out yourself or anything. You don't need to come up with anything. I've already got this all done. So don't worry about it too much. Now, let me show you guys kind of how this works. So the task input, again, like I said, is the prompt. So the user ask, that is asking the user a question and it is storing their question. So you ask, you know, how do I craft a $100 million offer? It now takes that and stores it inside of this variable. And what we can do in the AI task is call on that variable. So we can say at workflow ask. So user ask right there, we can insert that variable. Super easy, super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the front here. So answer this as if you're Alex Ramosi himself and you're just, you know, responding, responding in a way that's light, fun and casual, super simple. Now I'll show you guys how this actually works, like how it replies once we get into the database or the knowledge base, because that's where all the information is gonna go. We're gonna store that result in workflow.reply. Okay, cool. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and add an example input. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this example. What do you think about business partners? This is just giving the AI context. It's kind of like one shot prompting. So it's just kind of giving it an idea of how it should be behaving. So for this, I just said, yeah, man, that's a great question. Haha. <laughs> I think, you know, business partners are great as long as you're aligned, that kind of stuff. So just kind of an Alex Hormozzi answer. Advanced settings. Again, you guys can change the temperature. It doesn't really matter too much. I might've changed it here, but yeah, I went ahead and set the temperature on 0.8. Gonna go ahead and do that. Now we have the temperature on 0.8. All we have to do next is add a text card. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom, text, and we're just gonna call on that reply. So we're gonna add workflow.reply. Beautiful, now it'll say that. That looks great, awesome. Now there's just two more cards that we're gonna add. I'm going to add an intent card just in case, you know, someone gets stuck and they're like, all right, stop, stop. Like, I don't want any more. Gonna add that, go ahead and say stop. So if someone says, you know, stop, I'm done. Like, I don't want it to do it anymore. We can go ahead and send it to the end. Just like if they don't want anymore or they broke something, it doesn't work, stop and we can restart. Next, what I'm gonna do is add an expression card. So this will take us to the loop node, which is our final node right here. And this will essentially enable a loop. It's really simple. It's really similar to the question ask. We're also gonna have a user ask question. Now it's basically asking them, do you have any more questions for me? So that way, if they have more questions, can keep on asking them, keep on asking them. They can keep getting answers. Otherwise it would have just ended right there. That's not what we want. So we want them to be able to keep asking questions. And then once they're done, they can say, all right, yeah, that's all I'm good. Then it will end. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's literally the exact same as this. So we're going to go ahead and add our user ask card. If anything, you can actually copy these over. So copy, go ahead, just so we don't have to type that all out again. Oops, paste, paste card. Boom, user ask card. Can take the same thing with the reply. Come over here, paste it. Same thing with the workflow. Come over here, paste it. And then the intent. This one's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to copy this one. Going to bring it over here, paste the card. But the intent will be something like, no, that's all. You guys can add multiple options here. So that way it's a little bit more dynamic. So like, I'm good. Or, no oh, more questions. 
thanks. No, all good, that kind of stuff. So like whatever you would say, if there's any more questions. Now we're gonna change up this user ask card a little bit. We're gonna say, do you have any more questions for me? Okay, cool. Now finally, we're gonna bring our expression card. So right here, we're gonna add the card, we're gonna paste it. So essentially what this will do now is it will always take them, we're gonna loop it back around right to the beginning of the loop. Now this card will loop every single time. So do you have any more questions for me? Yeah, uh, what do you think about Layla? This answer, do you have any more questions for me? Yeah, what do you think about this person? Or what do you think about business partners? Or how do I craft this offer? Loop, loop, loop. Now, if someone says no, that's all, I'm gonna bring that to our final node, which is just like the ending, say, okay, no worries. I just like to insert text here. Like literally you do not need AI. If you wanna use AI, that's fine, but it's just pointless. You're gonna be the one using it. Awesome, feel free to reach out if there anything else. Boom, we can go ahead and take this and attach it to the end. Boom. All right, cool. Now we have our bot that is done. So before we test it though, we're missing a very crucial component and that is the knowledge base. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get that. So first and foremost, we need Alex Hormozzi's brain. I'm going to have the link down in the description below, and I'm going to show you guys what you can expect. Inside of this Google Drive is every single one of his interviews, his shorts, his YouTube videos, his Twitter posts, everything. I'm going to show you guys how you can import it. So go ahead and open one of these folders. Let's just do the Twitter posts because that's the easiest one. The hardest part about this is the fact that you will have to convert all of these files. These are MD files and you need them as text files, TXT. So once you've downloaded all of these, you can use a service like Cloud Convert to convert every single one of the files. I'm not gonna do that because that will be time consuming, but I'm gonna show you guys an example of how it's done. So let's just take this for example. This one is an MD file. Let's go ahead and download it. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to Cloud Convert, MD to TXT, select the file, downloads, throw that in there. All right, we're gonna convert this to a TXT. Click on Convert, you can upload, super simple. I'm gonna show you guys how to add it to your knowledge base in just a second. Download that, cool, we've got the TXT file. These are all of his Twitter posts. Now. To to create a knowledge base, right? You have your bot, everything's looking pretty solid. You're gonna move over right here and click on add knowledge base. Now this one, I'm just gonna call Alex tweets. Cool, we've got his tweets. You're gonna click on add knowledge base source and it's going to be documents, text document, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna do a documents, add document, click on it and then import this. Click on confirm and it's going to upload these documents. Now the AI uses a process called retrieval augmented generation. It's essentially pulling this data from the knowledge base in order to answer your questions. Go ahead and close that. Looks good. In the terms of description, I'm just gonna say, these are Alex Hormozzi's tweets. Now you guys do have limited storage. If you need more storage, which you will, you can contact them because everything that's in that Google Drive goes over the storage limit. So this is definitely something that you're gonna have to consider, but for this tutorial, we don't really need it. So we've got that in there. And now we can basically use our bot. I'm gonna move over to mine since it has everything in the knowledge base already. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it works, but you guys can test your bot as well. All right, guys. So this is actually Zoro from a couple days in the future. I realized that I completely forgot to record the actual test and there was a couple things that I wanted to add to this. On BotPress, there is a template that you can use that gets the personalities of different characters. If you use this to build your bot, you will actually notice that in the agents portion, you can use a personality agent. And essentially this will allow the bot to take on whatever personality you're trying to give it. Now I find with this, it can be a little bit buggy. I personally don't like to use it, but if you decide to, the personality agent is there for you to use. Now, once you have your bot built out, I'm using my basic one because obviously that already has all of the knowledge base updated. Once you have your basic bot out, we can go ahead and test it before we add it to Telegram. Now you can do this by using the emulator over here. You can just click new conversation and you can do something like hi. And I have an auto response that just comes up that way. Super easy. What can I help you with? Um, you can do something like how do I add more scarcity to my offer? Can you give me some examples? Now, sometimes BotPress like to throw out two text messages instead of one. That's a bug that I've noticed, but honestly, I don't really mind it because it just adds extra context to the situation, but you can play around with it. If it does do that, go ahead and do that. Now the AI will go ahead and take your question through the information capper the user ask, then we'll give you an AI response. So. It says, let's see here, scarcity can be a powerful tool when it comes to making your offer more irresistible. One way to add scarcity is by implementing limited time promotions. For example, you could offer a special discount that's only available for the next 24 hours. Another idea is to create exclusive bundles or packages that are only available to select number of VIP customers. Imagine creating a VIP package that includes additional bonuses, personalized support, but you only have a limited number of spots available. This creates a sense of urgency and exclusivity. Remember, scarcity is all about creating that fear of missing out. So you get creative and find unique ways to make your offer scarce 
fierce and resistible. Pretty awesome response. Cool. So basically that's how it works. That's how you can test with it. You can play around with it in the emulator. Now let's go ahead and move on to doing it in Telegram. Now that we have the bot complete and we have Telegram installed, we're going to go ahead and test it in Telegram just so I can show you guys an idea of what it's going to look like once you're done. So heading into Telegram, I'm going to say, hey, Alex, something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and say, once he responds, I'm going to say, what was the hardest part of your journey? Actually, I don't even know if mine's enabled right now. But that's okay. Gonna go ahead and do this. What was the hardest part of your journey? We're gonna go ahead and wait for him to respond. Now it's gonna take a couple seconds to respond. Like that's perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want, right? Cause hustle grind. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Once you're done, you should end up with responses like this. Super easy, super simple, but let me go ahead and show you guys how you can actually add it. So first and foremost, you need to find this the bot father. You need to message this Telegram account. Super easy, super simple. And what you're going to do, I'm going to scroll to the top, is you're going to do slash start. Now this will pull up a whole plethora of different options. The next thing that you're going to do is type slash new bot. Go ahead and do that. You're going to tell it a name for your new bot. You're going to tell it the actual like name. It's Hormozy bot in this case. And then it will give you a Telegram link. You're going to click on that Telegram link and it will add it to your Telegram just like my Alex Hormozy's added to mine. You're going to keep scrolling. It's going to give you an API token down here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that API token, you're going to copy it, and you're going to head back to BotPress. You're going to paste it right here, your API token, and then you're going to save the configuration and you're going to enable the integration, right? From there, you will be good. It should be operating properly. You might need to take a few extra steps and I'll show you that in just a second. From here, you can customize it. So you can do slash set user pick, tag the bot, then you can give it a picture. You can set join groups. You can change a bunch of privacy settings. You can basically do that however you want. Now, once you're done, you head back to your bot. And the first command that you're gonna send is slash start, and it's going to get things going for you. From here, you can test and mess around with the AI, mess around with the knowledge base, make sure everything's actually working properly. And there you have it. That is how you create your very own pocket Hormozy. In other words, Alex Hormozy in your pocket as your mentor. If you're into AI and you're not already, be sure to join the Discord because we cover stuff like this all the time. The link is in the description as well as the comments down below. We are almost at a thousand members, so I'd love to see you guys in there. And if you are a business owner and you're looking for ways to scale by implementing AI into your company, definitely feel free to book a free consultation call using the link in the description or in the pinned comment. There is no obligation to work with us whatsoever. This discovery call is purely to find out if we're a good fit to work together and if AI actually makes sense for your business. We've worked with Series D companies that have raised well over $300 million, so we are definitely not amateurs with this. But otherwise, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content from me, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another upload. And without further ado, I will see you guys later.